And we now have a suite of policies for the industrial transformation. Christia does not understand. I liked the way you said it's really important that trade policies work for people. WEF ideas and policies are leading Canada to ruin. At the end of the day, the question we have to ask ourselves is, will this make the life of the people I represent better? Will it create great jobs that people can build a life on and have hope and optimism for the future with? Thank you so much, uh, Christia. Approximately 235,000 Canadians are homeless. In 2020, there was a doubling of homeless drug overdose deaths from 2.7 to 4.7 deaths per day. As many as 50,000 Canadians are hidden homeless. Individuals who temporarily stay with friends, acquaintances, family members, or other such scenarios. They have nowhere else to go. In Vancouver, approximately 23% of the homeless are actually employed. In Calgary, 18.3% are employed. 10.4% are employed part-time. 28.3% are casually employed and 0.8% are self-employed. In Toronto, 20% of homeless people are employed. In Montreal and Halifax, the percentage of those working and on the streets is a little less. Homeless encampments are on the rise. Almost all of Canada's major municipalities have or have had at least one encampment since March 2020. Homeless people often don't want to go to shelters. This is often due to rules, i.e. shelters don't allow pets, drugs, or alcohol. Some shelters don't allow men and women to stay together. Or people don't feel safe there. The shelter system is often above capacity, especially in winter. It's hard to know the size and scope of the homeless population. Some organizations try to figure it out. The very transient nature, lack of permanent address makes this so. Many homeless individuals are hiding in the woods, many on the move. Many would not want to be identified as homeless. Of course not, they hope for better days, plus the stigma and difficulties. There are many links between economics and mental health, obviously. Since the lockdowns, business closures coupled with rising costs of living, more people are suffering from severe mental health issues. According to some studies, about 1.6 million children and teens in Canada struggle with mental health. We don't need studies to know this, we see it every day. But it is interesting to note that according to a Statistics Canada report released in 2022 called Mental Health and Access to Care Survey, it was found that way more Canadians are depressed and anxious today than they were a decade ago. No surprise there. Surges in mental health issues, levels of poverty and drug use among Canadians in the past decade are plain for everyone to see. Issues are spiraling. Since 2016, an estimated 27,000 people have died from drug use. Since the lockdown and disastrous government policies, there has been an increase in the unregulated drug supply in the country. Since 2016, there have been more than 9,000 opioid-related deaths. Canada's situation is getting really sad.